I like to think of my life in chapters, some good, some bad, some short, some long, some with interesting characters, some where it's more of an inner dialogue piece. The worst is when you start to feel you're in the moment and you notice to start to fade. It fades like the buzz of one too many drinks on a night out with friends. You want it to go on forever, but you know it can't. This is a 1967 Leica M4. The word Leica is a combination of lights, camera, and the letter M stands for Messuche, which is the word rangefinder or measurement search in German. The M4 has a 0.72 magnification viewfinder, which has bright frame lines for 35, 50, 90, and 135 millimeter. Never has a film camera made me run through a roll of film as quickly as this. It's weird to think how everyone wants to reach for a camera or something to capture a moment as if to prove you were there. This camera is pre-Botox and Brazilian butt lift. You get this just waiting for the day that brass starts showing through. You get this because you know you won't be able to replace it because you can't. The camera has all the basic needs, a rewind knob, film advance lever, frame counter, shutter button, timer, and shutter speed dial. Confidence with a rangefinder. What you're seeing in the viewfinder is not what your lens is seeing like with an SLR. So there's a little bit of trust needed that your lens is going to get what you want out of your shot. I unfortunately don't have any experience with Voigtland or Bessa rangefinders, which are the main go-to Leica alternative. A good amount less money and less in the high-end build quality it seems. If you're new to Leica, you might think M4 means it's the fourth M model camera, but you'd be wrong. It's essentially the fifth model in the Leica M line to be made. This is following the M3, MP, M2, and M1. In a nutshell, the M3 was a big change from the older Leica 1, 2, and 3 model series from the 30s to 60s, and was a big jump in technology. The M3 was built like a tank and sold well. Then they came out with the M2 in the late 50s, which was made in Canada to be cheaper, and was basically a simpler version of the M3, but added a 35mm frame line and took away the 135mm. Then the M4 came around and did well. They stopped to make the M5, which did so badly, they brought back the M4 again. The M4 added an easier to load film system, which meant you didn't have to feed the end of the reel into a spool and then load it into the camera. Everything on this camera is manual. Rewinding the film, shutter, focus, aperture. While modern digital cameras feel like a new Tesla or BMW, filled with all the most current technology to make using it as easy as possible, ready to be traded in at a moment's notice the new version comes out, this is an old VW bug. Nothing more than you need in a compact solid brass camera. I almost wish there was a shutter lock switch or something. I don't like not advancing the film after a shot, but on a few times I've accidentally snapped one off. The only major downside of this camera that I'm aware of is the rewind knob. While the angled one featured on this as well as the M6 and M7 make for a quicker rewind, there are reports that the metal parts can be bent as opposed to the straight ones found in the older M3 and newer MPs and MAs. Focusing the Leica is the same as other rangefinders, also like the Fuji GW series. Basically you have a small rectangle or patch, you move the focus until it lines up with what you're looking at. Why don't I have a Leica lens on a Leica camera? Well, I don't have the one to two thousand dollars lying around at the moment. And from my research, the Voigtlander and Zeiss M-mount lenses give you 80 to 90% of the same quality as a Simicron lens for about 30 to 50% of the price. But one day I will own that 35mm Simicron. It will be mine. Oh yes, it will be mine. Will this camera make you a better photographer? No. Will it get you a few more likes on your Instagram posts with this featured? Maybe. This is a great camera, but I'm not sure the Leica M cameras are totally worth the hype. Their build quality is second to none, but I see some similarities between Leica and Apple. Both are solid products, or used to be, but the name and the myth that goes along with them often softens the edges of new or never fixed issues. There are tons of famous Leica photographers like Gary Winograd and photographs that were made with Leicas, but I chalk this more up to the proficiency they had with the camera their luck and talent, and the fact that Leica lenses are great. You master one tool, and you're of course going to be great at using it. The bottleneck is your talent after that. One of my favorite photographers, Marcus Anderson, uses Leicas, but will use anything. He just uses Leica because he likes them. Why did I pick the M4? I wanted something totally manual with a 35mm frame line, and didn't want to sacrifice build quality. I didn't need metering, and I didn't have the $5,000 for a new MP or MA. 
On dark days filled with foul weather and memories you wish you could leave at the bus stop, there is no way to get rid of those bad memories. You take photos because it's something to take with you. A filtered moment of time with you as the director. The world doesn't stop for you, so you take that picture to bookmark that moment. You can't take that moment with you, but what if you could revisit it? Memories like data don't last forever. So like the sun setting and the distance of a road trip, these moments will pass. But what if there's a way to get back?